Got an exciting episode today on Men Are Forged. Uh, a good friend of mine, Matthew Blade, coming from L.A., but don't mistake him for an L.A. guy. That dude is be <laughs> born and bred. <laughs> I've how got a gun it? right there. Su- I'm looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> so how is it a, a Southern guy? How, how are you handling the L.A. life, the SoCal life? Man, I'm a, uh, I feel like a, a country boy that's been, that's lost. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the weekends, I definitely have to take my time because um, I, I do love the outdoors. So I definitely, there's a lot of times I'm heading to the mountains or mm. the beach or something to get out of just that, right. that feel of being in LA or in a city. So, yeah. You got into surfing much? I, I, I haven't actually been as much as I'd like to here in LA. I, I did an internship in San Diego a couple of years back. And that's when I actually really kind of like, you know, bit the, ca- caught the bug for, right. for certain. So, um, but I mean, I, I, I do it occasionally. It's kind of more of a social thing I'll do with some buddies, but yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. I mean, it's, it, I'm in, I'm in one of the best places to surf in the world. You know, there's, it's, it's amazing. So, yeah, that's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, dude, yeah. I mean, the first question I love to ask my guests is who were your early influences? You know, before you kind of step into adulthood, who you feel like really shaped your thinking, defined mm. masculinity, you know, really kind of was one of those big staples in your life. So, mm. yeah. Um, it's interesting because I feel like it shifted so much and it has shifted so much here in the last five years. Um, and I also think in a lot of ways, I didn't really know what that was growing up. You know, I, I was searching for what true masculinity was. And I think there was things that I latched onto that I thought it was this. Um, but, you know, if I could name names, I mean, I am a huge uh, George Strait fan, you know, and, and he, he actually influenced, <laughs> ironically <laughs> enough, he, he, he influenced my acting, too. I, I saw a movie mm-hmm. with him. Uh, he, he, he did a movie called Pure Country, right? <clears throat> it's an okay movie. He has not his acting skills, we'll say that. <laughs> right. Um, but I, I remember I watched it and I heard that, uh, like the, the whole movie kind of follows him and, I, and this is love story. Mm-hmm. And he never kissed the, um, the, the, the actors he was playing alongside with. And I heard that that was because he wanted to show his wife that he he respected her. And now, and I just remember being like, wow, that's like a guy who like has, he has the shiny things and um, yet he still like operates in integrity. And, you know, it's funny because as I'm saying this, like, I, like, I came into acting, I was like, I'm not kissing like anybody, but now that's, I I do that. So like my mind has been changed on it, but I think the point is, um, yeah that i just saw someone who didn't like what everyone out here was saying this is what you should do Mm. they 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 lived in a different zone where they got their i guess their right and wrong their their center from from something else like they stood with their own convictions even though uh, it wasn't kind of the common thing yeah i remember that marked me in a way yeah yeah george Strait. what a great legend man (laughs) king george dude he's he's an absolute legend i mean i was when i found out that he was a faithful husband for years especially after listing all my exes live in texas right i hang my hat in tennessee (laughs) you're like oh that's that was not real that was just a song yeah i I don't even know if he wrote that song you know like somebody probably wrote that song put it on his desk he was like yeah let's write this thing you know so yeah, <laughs> that's funny. Mm-hmm. And I always think about George Strait, like he's like a fine wine. The older I get, the better I enjoy him. Like he is right. so he really is so good. Um, yep. Well, Matthew, yeah. So, you know, um, yeah, moving to you grew up in Mississippi, in, um, Jackson area, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jackson, Mississippi. Went to Ole Miss, went to college. You know, what was your... Yeah college experience like you know what was some things you learned and yeah unlearn maybe shoot man uh you know college for me was it was tough it was really tough but yeah I I went to University of Mississippi and my first two years there 
I, um, I really struggled, not because I was like, maybe like I wasn't partying. I wasn't doing the thing that Ole Miss is maybe known for. Um, I just, I remember feeling very isolated because I had some big changes in my life happen. And uh, I was also dealing with a stutter. Um, like I, I used to have a, a, a stutter. Um, and it, yeah, it, it was more around, uh, it was kind of like a nervous system thing. And when I got really nervous, I would just kind of lock up. And I remember having a couple of conversations on the phone mm-hmm. um, and like literally trying to talk on the phone and just being like, the word wouldn't come out and just the feeling of humiliation that I felt. Um, and so I think what that kind of triggered in me was I want to hide away. And so I, I remember feeling so isolated um, and I just kind of like started just backing away from, from show from maybe um, the word I'm thinking right now is like expressing who I was. I was just like, okay, I've got to conform. I can't C- communicating actually makes me feel pain. Uh, I know that kind of can sound very vague right now, but um, oh yeah, yeah. So it it, it it was tough, you know. And and my college was also split in between two times. Like I mm-hmm. uh, I did two years at Ole Miss. And then I moved to uh, to Redding, California, and did uh, two years there at like a ministry school. Mm-hmm. Uh, and 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 then I moved back after two years and finished my college degree. Mm-hmm. So, but it, it it was interesting, you know. I I kind of feel like a unicorn in a way because like I I love the South. I, it's like I love. I have some of the, my most dear people in the South. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, there's something in me that I'm like, I don't, I want to fit in. I just don't down there. And, and, I, and I've kind of come to terms with that in the past three, four years. And same thing, I moved out here to California. I'm like, I want to fit in up here. Mm-hmm. But there's just something in me that's, I'm like, I'm a little different. I guess I just, a lot of the South in me when I come to California. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of California in me when I, when I come to Mississippi. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so it, it was tough, man. To, to, be, to be honest with you, it was it was it was tough. Yeah. So I mean, really, what led to the end? You, I mean, I, yeah, I get you saying like, man, just not feeling like this is your place. Um, totally. Totally. Yeah. And and then, do you feel like that was what led to the stutter? Was you just feeling very insecure about where you were, or have you figured out where that came from? I'm not exactly sure where the stutter came from. I think it was just like a nervous thing. Um, and I, I had also like, when I became, when I was 17, I had become a Christian, right? So I, I had like, you know, had this big life change. And so I think that was reforming a lot of things in my mind. I was seeing the world in a different way. Yeah. And I think with that, maybe that brought up some anxiety. It, I was, I was giving myself permission to look at certain things in my life that I maybe had kind of pushed to the side and with that brought this anxiety up. Mm -hmm. And, and so, um, yeah, I, I, I think it, it was a good thing though, because it needed to come out because I, I, you know, I since don't deal with that anymore, Mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, it was, I think that's why I came out. Yeah. So what then led to you two years being at school, (laughs) I mean, where me and you met, I know, you know, a place called Jay's right. Ranch, you know, it's right. I don't know. Many people know that you are a uh, <coughs> river guide out there. Um, <laughs> right. um, so, but yeah, I mean, yeah. So what led to the big decision of like, man, I got to put two years of this down and I, I don't, I don't want to pour into this experience right now. I want to go to Reading and be in a ministry school and pour into myself spiritually. What led to yeah. that? Well, the, the, the summer before that was probably one of the most impactful summers of my life. I, I went out to JH mm-hmm. where I met you mm-hmm. and I had this massive uh, uh, fear around the stutter, right? And, you know, it, it, it would come and go. Like there was times when I could talk clear and there was times when, especially publicly, that it would really lock up mm-hmm. and have some pretty like dramatic memories of public speaking and not being able to get some words out Mm -hmm. uh but essentially that that summer something changed in me to where i was like i'm 
I no longer can live a complacent life, a compromised life. What honestly spurred it on is I was at JH Ranch and this lady who has no idea, had no idea who I was, walked up to me and she put her hand on my shoulder and she said, the stammering tongue shall be made fluent in the name of Jesus. And um, <clears throat> she said, Matthew, you're on a path where no stammer or stutter can keep you from. And so, wow. and I first started laughing because I was like, how in the world does she know that? Like, <laughs> yeah, how, how do you know I deal, deal with the stutter? Like, right. mm. like she, she had, like, I've never seen this woman before and, and 100% never talked to her. Mm -hmm. And I, I laughed at first and then all of a sudden it hit. And I remember like a ton of emotion came out because I, the weight of just carrying that, that mm. thing and, and hearing that that's what, you know, that God thought about my stutter, that he was going to like, that there was like a promise there that mm. this thing, this thing would be kind of smoothed over and that that was what I had to could put my hope in. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> with, with that, it gave, it was so personal to me that it gave me the courage to look at my life and go, okay, may, maybe I can like have significance in my life. Maybe I can aim at that. Wow. Like, maybe I can, I don't know, live a life that means something to me and hopefully it'll bless other people. Mm. And, and so um, after that, that was the very beginning of the summer. I started looking into my life and, and I was like, okay, why am I going to college? I started asking myself why all these questions. Like, why, why am I just doing this? Because everyone else is doing this too. Mm -hmm. Like is, there's this formula that everyone's following and that's not necessarily bad. But I think as I was looking at my life, I was like, why am I doing that? I, for me, it felt like a compromise for, for me to do that meant for me to say that life is just paying bills and, uh, and there's, there's nothing really significant about it. So for, for, for me to say that life is, we have one life and it's significant, I have to live my life on the edge of like what I, what is possible in my mind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, no. Yeah, absolutely. There was this like seed of there's something more and I have to go find it. I can't just leave 100%. it dormant. I got to go figure it out and I'm not going to do it find it doing the same thing I've always done. 100%. And I think that's what's interesting about, you know, if anything I could share to my audience is like, you know, if you want something different, stop doing what you've always done, you know? Um, that's, that's, that's a word right there. <laughs> yeah. And so, but, but what was, you know, but here's the next step. And then I think this is what keeps people in that place is mm -hmm. the pushback, the, the cultural norms of like trying to like, no, You'll, you'll have, you just keep yeah. going down the road. You'll have everything you ever wanted. You yeah. know, what, what, what was the pushback like and how did you respond? <laughs> Man, <laughs> you tell somebody when you're from Mississippi, you tell somebody that you're going to live in California to do a ministry school or then be an actor, <laughs> the looks that you get. Um, gosh. <laughs> and I, you know, I had so many people worried about me. Mm -hmm. Um, which was honestly, it was, it was painful, man, to like have people who were worried about when I actually just needed them to believe in me. Mm. Um, like the, I, I, as I look back and process that time, I'm like, man, I, I, I know I w in my heart, I can honestly say I was making the decisions for the right reasons. Like, right. Don't say that. Like, look at me. I'm just saying like, I, I can go, okay, I was doing this because I genuinely wanted to better my life, to follow God and to serve others. Mm -hmm. and to be met with kickback hurt but it was important I really believe I'm like I wouldn't trade it I needed it mm. I needed to know that I could stand alone mm. and and that, and that I had what it took to walk away from the crowd if it wow. was if everyone was going good job Matthew right I, I wouldn't have those things that like I'm using right now as an actor in a tough industry mm. Like, and I, I've, I've seen that stuff carry me through seasons where I'm like, yo, I, I knew, I learned how to take a punch mm. from people that I cared about. That's good. And so now when, when I come into this thing where there's people that I don't really care about, you know, because I don't know them, they're, they, they're just like people way out there that will have and say in my life and my acting. Mm. And I'm like, actually, you, you, you don't get to tell me 
who I am or tell me how to live my life. I get my values from up here mm-hmm. and, and I will follow that. And I don't, and it, there's actually a lot of joy that comes when you're like, you know what? People don't accept me in, in, in a sense, but I'll tell you the payback when the script flips <laughs> is unreal. Right. And I'll, I'll, I'll leave it at that. It's like, like there, and there, there, you know, there's people who will criticize you and then they'll, oh man, like, I'm so proud of you. And I'm, I'm so thankful. I'm like, oh, th- thank you for being proud of me. Yeah. I really needed you when I was hurting. Right. When it was hard. Um, when it was hard. I really needed you right there. But I, I also, I'm also at the same time, I understand their point of view and go, hey, like I, I get that I was kind of like this threat and this weird like thing. And you were genuinely worried about me. You, you cared huh. for me. So, yeah, you, I think that's part of life though, Carl, right? I'm like, dude, you, there's, there's something about, you know, and it's, it, there's a book called uh, the hero's journey by, um, Joseph, by Campbell. Joseph Campbell. And it, it's, it, it kind of talks about, you know, the story that has been told a thousand times and they, a lot of people who write scripts use this kind of, it's, it's a form, not a formula. But, right. and, and it's just kind of like, this is kind of what human beings gravitate to in a story. Mm-hmm. But if you look at the life of humans, it's kind of what we want to do with our own lives. We, we, we want to like kind of face the unknown to leave this, this ordinary life that we've known for so long mm-hmm. and to go out into this uncharted world and go, okay, who am I? I, I, I got to figure out who I am and I can't know in the ordinary world. I have to go to the new special world. That's what Joseph Campbell calls it. Mm. But yeah, there is something so true that when you're surrounded by the familiar it's mm-hmm. hard to really get a perspective that's broader, like that moment where you like, I am significant and I am meant to live a significant life. And so I have to step out from what mm-hmm. I know is familiar. That's really good. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So you end up uh, coming back and doing finishing school. Yep. And really what, what happened after that? What led to your decision to say, you know what? I mean, I'm a Southern guy from Mississippi who loves to hunt, you know, likes to be outdoors, (laughs) but wants to be an actor. Yeah. What I can, who used to have a stutter also, there's that part too. I want to stand in front of people and talk. (laughs) That's right. Great. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. A little more in that transition. You know, it's, Without going into too much detail, I, um, you know, I guess when I hit like 22, I, 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 I call it my season where I fell. I, um, you know, I'd been to this ministry school, so I was like following God and, you know, trying my best to, to be a good Christian. And mm. it's, it's, it's funny because some of the stuff in your heart, if you don't deal with it, it'll come back up. And, right. uh, uh, and I ended up falling uh it, it for, for for lack of better words as a christian and, and essentially living a double life i was i was having this cognitive dissonance i was living one way mm-hmm. but i didn't believe that was the right way to live and i knew it the whole time and so it started to tear at me on the inside yeah and this was this was at my 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 second round at college yeah and i ended up stop stopping doing the dumb stuff that i was doing yeah because it wasn't helping me it wasn't helping anybody else mm-hmm. and i so I started to take another look at my life again. I was kind of back to square one. I was like, okay, do I want to live a compromised life? Mm. What do I want to do with my life? And at this point, I actually did not know I wanted to be an actor. I didn't know I wanted to be an actor until I was like 26. Hmm. So I, I, I graduated college and I was like, I have to like find that thing that I had before, that thing that said, I'm not going to compromise. I'm going to live a, a life that's worth living. And so I actually went out and worked at J Ranch again. <laughs> I, 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 could, I could never really, I guess, get away from that place at first because I think that it, <laughs> there was something I, I needed to go through there. Yeah. And uh, I ended up doing my, my dream job there. I was the head river guide. It was my dream job at the time. And it was like, mm-hmm. awesome. I was like running the river program, just guiding people all day long on the river. Uh-huh. And um, Which, I thought- you know, on the river, just to, I remember um, as a pause, like, the head river guide you got to be in front of the group of people a lot 
you got to teach, oh, yeah. and you got to show, you got to make, give instructions. And so you got to be on oh, yeah. point, you got to be organized, you know, you're the conductor oh. of much of everything. <laughs> it, it was so much more than I thought it was. I was like, <laughs> yeah. As a regular river guide, you're like, that's not that hard. And then I get there and I was like, holy, <laughs> this is a whole different ball game. I mean, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. it, it, it wasn't even about being a river guide because I, I, that's what I, being a regular river guide is mainly about river guiding, but being the head river guide is about learning how to lead people. Yeah. And that's what I didn't realize going in. And I learned a lot of really valuable lessons there that I had to kind of learn the hard way a couple of times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, um, yeah, yeah I, let me just hit pause real quick, Matthew. Yeah, like, you got any funny stories from the river? Because I know you, <laughs> I just <laughs> I, hope, I hope some of my old leaders aren't listening. <laughs> um, I've got some man, some of the stories from the river. I've got some videos, I've got some uh funny stories. I mean, night rafting, ah, <laughs> you're not supposed to do that, but yeah. Me, 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 and me and the fellows took took a raft down uh, the river. Um, it pitched black night, so you, we, it was kind of like a test. How well do we know this river? Can we do this rip? Can we guide this river, the section of the river, without being able to see? <laughs> <laughs> Can you? Not very smart. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we did. We, we, we made it down fine. Um, golly, there's there's some stuff that I don't know if it's. I don't know if I want to put myself in that <laughs> in, 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 in that uh, light with some of my old leaders because they might listen to this. And yeah. I'm sorry. If you, if you are listening to this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. I won't get you in trouble. I promise. <laughs> um, okay. So, yeah, man. Uh, I mean, you kind of, you talked about, so yeah, being at JH and that second experience, JH, being the head river guy, that really got the wheels turning. And they said it wasn't until 26 is when you decided to be an actor. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Can you a little bit. Well, yeah. From that time to, to, to men and making that decision. Mm-hmm. Well, you know that, cause I, I was a head river guide for two summers and oh, I stayed in between yeah. the summers for like an off season up at JH ranch, which is in Northern California. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought I would kind of know what I wanted to do after that, like during the summer of my first summer as head river guide. But I just didn't, I kind of felt the same after. And I had a lot of questions for God. I was, I was pretty hurt by my own bad decisions and how he could, I, I was really mad at God, I think, because I was like, God, why would you like call me to your, to your path in a life? Like, why, why would you want me to know you when you knew I was going to fail? Like that, that's, I just felt like I was such a failure. Yeah. And, uh, Anyway, so I stayed on in the, in the winter off season of JH Ranch. Yeah. And I essentially lived alone. I, I was in this house by myself. There was a couple of people still on property, but you can imagine up in the mountains of Northern California where like a grocery store is like, you know, almost an hour away. And um, it's, it, there was a lot of alone time. And I said to myself, I was like, I'm not, I'm not going to watch Netflix this entire time. Yeah. I'll watch Netflix occasionally, but I'm not going to like just bury myself in movies and kind of distracting myself. I'm going to actually take a look at why it hurts so bad in the Whoa. inside. Matthew, <laughs> dang, yeah. that's brave, man. That's, that's bold. Yeah. Well, and, and you know, it's, it's, it's funny because in that I came out with something that I maybe could have talked to someone about on a podcast or given a honestly preached about from the stage, but I didn't know in my heart. And that was that I am already a son. Like, you know, I, I think like w- w- when it comes to my, my, my walk with and uh, in, in my me following God and me wanting to serve him, I think I always kind of felt like this pawn and this, you know, I'm always like not good enough and I'm always trying to like get in his good graces. And I think what I came out of that realizing was that I actually am enough. Mm. I, I, I like I, I yeah I, I I am enough and I'm like and like the 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 lingo that when I pray when I pray to him it's like son like father and son mm-hmm. um like I'm one of his kids is kind of how I see it mm-hmm. and 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 that carried with it an acceptance I think is what was really impactful to me and I think I stopped trying to be accepted mm-hmm. and I, I I I call that my season where manhood found me because I 
you know, it's like when you stop trying so hard and you're like, I'm just actually going to try. I'm just, I'm not going to try for everyone to think I'm a good person. I'm just going to be one. And, and if, if they think I'm a good person, awesome. Love that. Yeah. If they don't, dang, that sucks. But it's, I mean, I'm, I'm still, I'm not, nothing's going to change. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. Mm. And, uh, and when I cleared my mind in that way, when I was like, okay, I'm not going to try to win people over anymore. Or I guess maybe I said that for the first time in my life. I, I went on a journey of that. I felt acting. And it was such a Interesting. random thing that I had never thought of once in my whole life. Mm. You can ask all the people that I grew up with. They'd be like, yeah, Matthew was probably the last person that we could imagine being an actor, <laughs> which is just so funny to me. Yeah. Uh, just when I'm like, I, how, I, I agree. I, I am the last person that should be an actor. And yet here right. I am. Um, yeah, so it, it, it was one of those seasons and I, I, as I was praying to God, I was like, God, I, I need you to make acting. If, if that's something you want me to do, I need you to make it clear. And I had some pretty crazy, um, moments after that, where one of a guy walked up to me at a wedding and was like, dude, I just got this random question. Do you want to come act with me this summer? This was like literally a couple of days after I had had this like moment where I thought about acting and then I had another guy call me on the phone and say dude I had this thing I was cooking dinner and I just thought what if you moved to LA and became an actor and I was like <laughs> <laughs> is this real is this my call like, what is my yeah. call? <laughs> <That's> my calling <laughs> but uh yeah so I think that, that that was enough for me to go okay you know what I don't know if I'm hearing correctly I'm at least gonna give it a shot mm-hmm. yeah so, Mm-hmm. And, and so what was that process like? I'm going to give it a shot. I mean, for people who don't know, what does that mean? I mean, cause that, cause I mean that, that in itself, I mean, you talk about the vulnerable moment of saying, I'm not going to watch Netflix when I have mo- majority of my time by myself and I'm going to actually yeah. figure out who I am. That's yeah. a vulnerable. And then the next, so that's a private one. Mm-hmm. And then the yeah. public one of like, bearing your soul and learning how to not be so too self uh, what's the wording i'm looking for self-aware enough to then communicate in a way that is powerful and meaningful that actually is authentic you know mm-hmm. yeah anyway. well, and i well i think that word um <clears throat> the, the last word you used authentic yeah was was what this whole journey and acting journey has all has been about and, you know, the ironic thing about acting, which I didn't know, is acting is not about pretending. It's not, it's not about tricking the audience. It's actually about being authentic, having a real experience mm-hmm. in that moment where you're actually experiencing something. Mm-hmm. And then, you, then the moment ends and you realize that was just your imagination. It wasn't real. But you actually do go through it. It's not like I'm going to fake this facial expression. You know, it's right. like, like, like that's what the audience can tell. The audience, someone who loves movies, you can totally. tell. Totally. Yeah. And, you, you know, it's so funny. The humans are so uh, like we're so in tune with any threats, like, for example, someone trying to manipulate us and how we mm. how, how we how we do that is we watch and see if people are lying, mm. see if we believe them. If, and like so you can imagine like human beings so good at that. And then you like watch a movie. You're you're all we're already subconsciously looking for that. We're looking for when people are faking it. So it's it's tough. It's tough to really live that stuff out because you have to really get over yourself Mm -hmm. um but yeah to answer your question i I keep diving off the off the question but um it it, it was it was one of me going okay i'm I'm gonna suck at something like (laughs) wow that's wow hold on step yeah that is a big (laughs) deal how many men especially in our 20s are willing to do that i'm just gonna i'm gonna totally embrace the suck basically i'm gonna embrace the discomfort and i'm just gonna suck at it and see what happens right totally yeah and um it's it's not not a lot of people will do that i, I know i avoided it yeah for sure it, it, i I'm, i realized that i had to go on a process where i could get to where i could actually truthfully say that mm-hmm. to where i was like actually life is either we like this gigantic cliff jump and this massive adventure where we're just going okay i don't know what's going to happen but i'm i'm going to live this the best of i can with like with yeah. integrity uh-huh. but also like I'm jumping off the cliff mm-hmm. and, and that's kind of what acting, I, I walked into the first day of drama school and I was like, where am I? Like, <laughs> what am I 
ooing. And like <laughs> some of the people there, they're artists. They're so not like me. Like they're so like, they're so not like anyone I knew in Mississippi. And I'm like, I am so far away from home. <laughs> but it was, it was one of the best experiences of my life because in that, like I, um, and, and this is what I've learned about acting. It's like, it's where I've learned that I'm loved by God. And that's actually what I felt like God told me. He was like, he asked me a question one time. He was like, Matthew, why do you think I created you to be an actor? And I was like, I don't know. I, you know, I, I just answered some dumb answer. And he was like, he was like, it's because it was the path where I saw you'd be able to receive the most of my love. And I know that's been true because I've the whole time I've been like, holy smokes, I feel terrible. I feel like I suck at acting. I feel like I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm so locked up. And in that, God has been able to like speak in that I actually am enough, you know? And I think that's as guys, that's something that we, that, that enough thing is something that's kind of always there. Like I'm not, I'm not enough. I didn't measure up here. I'm not the, I'm not the top dog right now. I kind of feel like the middle dog or the bottom of the totem pole. Yeah. Comparing um, yourself constantly to others. Totally. What is success look like in whatever environment I'm in? Totally, man. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah dang so yeah man so you got into acting and you did drama school was in reading right i did three years of drama school and oh, two and a half years two and a half of years. drama school in reading yeah and then i started yeah, yeah. And so what uh yeah what, what was the biggest thing you learned from just doing that <sighs> um <laughs> oh gosh i think truth and honesty hmm and I, I, I have been the irony of acting school. Yeah. It's, I have tried to implement that in my life. And I've, and I've tried to be so honest mm -hmm. because I realized the nice Southern boy in me was very <laughs> quiet and he was very, there was a sod there, dude. It was like, I like saw myself, I, I, kind of the picture I saw of myself was me with all these tattoos. I don't have a tattoo. <laughs> um, but I, 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 this is kind of like the picture I had in my head and all these tattoos I had on myself were things that I had to find who I was, who I was in relation to this person, who I thought I might become my best case scenario, mm -hmm. what I, um, what I wanted people to see about me. And I think acting has been the taking off of those and going, I just am me. I like these things. I like to hunt. I like to you know, do outdoorsy. I love everything, dude. I just, I've always liked dude stuff, you know, like I like working out. I like hunting. I like fighting. I like watching MMA, you know, like yeah. I just like it all. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's actually been an interesting journey in LA. The first week I got here, I was like, dude, a lot of things that I really value are taboo for some of these people in this industry. Like for example, turkey hunting, but I, I took a drive and I actually did listen to George Strait. <laughs> I, I, I listened to George Strait, the song run. And, uh, and it was like, as I was listening to it, it was like four in the morning on a Sunday morning. And I was feeling so like icky in LA. And I realized as I was on that drive and kind of through the song, I was like, if I attain anything in this city and it's because I put up a facade, it's literally worth nothing. Mm. I have to be honest. And if by some miracle or some stroke of luck, something positive happens, I'll know that it was me that got it. And it, 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 it wasn't my perfectionism, like perfect Matthew, as I, as I kind of like call it sometimes. Yeah. And um, the actual the lingo is I was like, LA needs to know turkey hunting Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Like, they, they, they got to know that I like the turkey. And I, and I it's funny because I, 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 I'll drop that sometimes around people in the industry. Like I, I was talking to this big actor. I'm talking like big actor. <laughs> and I'm on this set and I'm like, man, this is I'm pretty nervous. My first set ever. And um, they're kind of like half of them are all vegan. Love that. Great. I, I, <laughs> nothing against that. <laughs> I happen to love meat. And I, I, one of my favorite things to do is hunt. Like I like to kill animals. Oh yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And 
And uh, I was like, I can't hide right now. And I was like, you know what? Like, I just, one of the things I love to do is turkey hunt. It's one of my passions. I, uh, it's, it's, it's how I kind of like spend my free time. And they're all kind of like looking at me wide-eyed. And this one dude goes, dude, the biggest actor. He goes, dude, I went on a pronghorn hunt last year. And I was like, are you serious, dude? <laughs> and so we just start talking. Yeah. Like, this dude's probably like hiding that he's a hunter too. <laughs> yeah. I was wow. like, dude, come out of the closet, man. Your 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 hunting closet. You just let's just be open out here. <laughs> dude, you get that is awesome. You give people permission to be themselves by being yourself. That is so real. In a place that is fairly known. I mean, I only know by you know really what social media puts out and what the world is. That LA is a, a fake. A lot of people are fake out there. And here you are throwing that world and said, "I'm just gonna be me, and I'm gonna give you permission to be you." That's freaking awesome. <laughs> yeah, 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 man. Um, so yeah, give me. So I would love in in drama school. Was there a moment where you some assignment or something where you got up in front of a crowd or or something and went, "I can do this. I can. I've got it. I know how. I, I think I can do this the rest of my life. I actually mm -hmm. am good at this. This is. I wasn't just hearing some voice. I was actually hearing God's voice for this. Yeah. There was a couple that I, I know there was one where I had to do this exercise is called this is my stage. <laughs> and you literally the assignment is you get in front of the class and you have there's like all these different points of the stage. You walk to one. You say, this is my stage. You walk to another. You say, this is my stage. You walk to another. You say, this is my stage. And. I did the exercise once, or I think I got up there and I was like really nervous. Mm -hmm. And I remember I took a moment to myself and I was like, this one's for the people that I love. Like, I'm not going to do this one for me. I'm going to do this one for the people that I love. And I'm going to actually throw off anything that I have to like protect myself. Like that would make me want to look good. And I did the exercise. And at the end, I kind of blacked out in the middle of the exercise. And like the, the, the person who was leading the exercise was like, scream it scream it and i was like this is my stage <laughs> and uh he the 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 guy gets up um he's actually one of my dear friends now but he uh his name is fabiano yeah he he, he, he walks up to me and he's he goes bro do you know what you carry in your voice there's something about your voice and he goes you you've got what it takes i don't know what it is about you but there's something you've got what it takes and in that i felt like okay that's all I needed. I held it loosely because I was like, in the entertainment industry, there's compliments everywhere and there's criticism everywhere. But at the same time, it was from like a guy who is like a spiritual father to me. And mm -hmm. I, uh, or I guess I'm, I'm a mentor would be a better word. Um, and it, it meant something. I was like, okay, that's enough. I know I'm on the right track. Yeah. And, um, and then I did a play that year too, where I like was really nervous about that, but then once the nerves fell off, I was like, oh, I was made for this. Mm. This, is, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. Woo. So, yeah. Um, mm. So, yeah, man, I mean, tell me a little bit about, yeah, just how, where you are now. What's, uh, what's exciting you? What are you learning? What's, uh, what, what's life like for Matthew now? So, dude, it's, uh, it's all, it's all, a, it's all a journey and a process. You know, I, uh, I, I graduated drama school. I graduated from that drama school in May. Mm -hmm. And then I got to be, um, I was on set for a, for a film in, in July, which, which was pretty cool. And, uh, and, and since then I've been back in LA, yeah. I, I did a short film a little, a little while ago with some friends mm -hmm. and, uh, but I've, and I've been part of this class. And so it, essentially I've been kind of like tucked away here in LA just, um, but I've been work, I've been grinding on my, in my class, just like trying to. So that's my goal is to become a better actor. I'm, I'm honestly not trying to, to, to achieve anything shiny. I, I want to be the best actor that Matthew can possibly be. Yeah. And so um, I've been doing that. I've been hanging out with some good people here, trying to sneak away and hunt as much as I can. And uh, yeah, just kind of like take this whole life in and just, and just uh, try to live as honestly as I can. And that's, that's looked like a certain, a, a few different things about just like having some cool conversations with some people, but yeah, that's kind of what life looks like. It's, it's pretty, uh, I, I do something on a weekend too, a little weekend gig, a little weekend job, but yeah. What's it like being on a movie set? Dude. Uh, 
<laughs> nerve wracking. Um, it's like a traveling carnival. Um, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's a traveling, it, it, it's, it's crazy, man. It, for, for, for me, it was um, exhilarating and it led me into like even more asking myself more honest questions about who I was. Mm. Um, but it was also something I was like, dude, I definitely want to do this the rest of my life. I had, I had little bitty tastes after that. I was like, Oh, this is all I want to do. I, I, I want to work in, in acting. I want to do theater. I want to do film TV. I don't really care as long as I'm acting. And, huh? You know, I could do it for free. I always try, I always try to like make myself have that mentality. Like, okay, what I'm doing right now, could I do it for free? Yep. Okay. I'm good. Mm. Cool. I, I love this stuff. That's, so that's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, that's interesting. I mean, I think it was a lot of guys feel when they've had big moments like yourself of discovering more of who they are and who God is and finding their calling and what they want to do the rest of their life, that that's the arrival point. But you, man, yeah. they're still learning. You're still growing. We're honing your craft, but there's also more of just confronting yourself. Totally, and man. That's just such a powerful revelation, Matthew, that still here totally. you are. You're still like growing as a man as well as an actor. You know, 100%. That's, yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah. That's so cool. 100%. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, the, uh, you know, the last question I usually like so, what would you tell your 25 year old self that, sh- that you know now? Mm, two things yeah I say, um attack anything that causes you to feel shame in your life Woo, that's good and how you do that is through honesty mm. be be as honest brutally honest with the people that you care about in your life you don't have to be honest with everybody like you don't have to reveal all your deepest darkest secrets to the world mm. but it is really important that you like living in truth i guess i can only speak for myself but when I felt like all of me was out on the table, I felt like I actually could think straight. Actually, the fog was gone and I actually felt loved by those people. Like, wow. like I actually felt like I was accepted and enough by the people mm. because I was like, they, they see it all. There's nothing in me that, that can say if they only knew. Right. Um, and I think that's really important. And that's, and for me, shame is crippling professionally, relationally, spiritually, emotionally Boom. so um and maybe even physically you, there's there's no telling what, the, what that mentality does to your gut or whatever yeah or um, even just like your sh- like your whole body positioning it just like yeah mm. totally so it's so important if you've this is what i'll say and i would say it to myself i say if you've got a secret get it out yeah huh get it out and and, and be honest because um everybody's got some mm. and that's okay and life happens to us sometimes and it's uh it's it's worth living in truth right it's it's so that's how we're designed to live we're designed to live in truth with nothing hidden Hmm. that's good man yeah so good Good, man well what uh where can people find you what's a a good reason (laughs) you know on tiktok just kidding just kidding (laughs) um (laughs) no i uh I do have a TikTok, but it was, I just, my friends had it, so I just made it kind of as a joke. But um, I, you can follow me on Instagram at the Matthew Blade. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, you could also, yeah, I have a couple of hunting accounts, but those are secrets. I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want those public. Okay. Got those it. are private for a reason. Um, but uh, yeah, you can find me on, and I mean, I, the, the, the movie I did is, is coming out this spring. Um, it's called The Walk and um yeah so that 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 should be out at some point this spring and uh, i i play a really um troubled hurt kid who uh tends to go to violence it was a fun character to play oh wow Um, you throw a little fisticuffs a little bit you gotta stop uh, i (laughs) i well i i had to i had to fight a kid and i did i did my own stunts for that um and then i also accidentally <laughs> this is, oh i i gotta say this one last thing before we go this okay. is crazy um on the film set this is where i actually knew i i could do it i had what it took mm-hmm. i have the scene where i have to like this i essentially try to kill this kid he's on a bus he flicks me off i'm a rioter outside this bus and the script says i'm gonna kill you and the script directions say my character loses control jumping up trying to like break the bus 
Mm-hmm. And it was supposed to be just kind of like a bang on the bus type thing. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I'm going to send this. I'm going to go all in. <clears throat> so they were like, action. And I, I told my, the guy I was acting with, I was like, hey, man, just want to let you know, I'm going to hit this bus pretty hard. Like, yeah. just, just be ready. I don't, I don't want you to get hurt. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to do this lower window. He's leaning his head out the bus. It's like a double pane bus where you slide the window down. Mm-hmm. I run up and I go, ah, and I go through two sheets of glass. But I stay in character and I fall down. And I get up and I start ripping out glass with my hands. <laughs> and I start hitting the bus with like, and blood is all over the bus. I can feel blood dripping down my face. There's extras on the bus and they're starting to cry. <laughs> <laughs> because they were so scared and i was looking at him like talking to him like i'm gonna kill you too um and the director calls cut and everyone's like <laughs> i'll never forget their faces man <laughs> they were like are you okay and there i can feel the blood dripping on my head i had to get my head kind of patched up i don't know if you can see the scar but um uh it was a moment where I don't know if it was great for the movie and the fact like of me accidentally breaking the window. And I don't know if the shot looked super great. Uh, it was mainly on my other actor friend. Mm-hmm. Um, but in that moment I left there and I go, I know I'm in it 100%. Yeah. I know, I know that I don't have to throw my body through window. I guess not what I'm like, I don't need to do that for this, but I know in me I'm willing. Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. um, that was a cool, but anyway, that's, that's, that's a movie called the walk. It's coming out in spring. So um, awesome. if, if, yeah. if, if you see it, go, go check it out. Absolutely. The walk, but yeah, being yeah. willing to whatever you're in, I'm going to give a hundred percent to it. Wow. I'm going to be here fully present. If that's not a message for men to hear, wherever you are, be a hundred percent there. Marriage as a dad work, you know, it's don't be, you know, a divided man. I don't know. Jesus said something about a divided heart or something, but yeah. Yeah. That's As, really good. Man. Always be 100%. Totally agree. Well, speaking of 100%, thank you, Matthew, for sharing your story, giving it all, man. That was good. Um, oh, man. Thank you so much for the invitation to come on. Absolutely. 